Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video I'm going to show you how to read the periodic table in terms of electron configuration. It's... Welcome back everyone. As you can see, I've got here my periodic table that is specially labeled to help us understand electron configuration. Uh, but a couple things to point out first. If you recall in the last video, I said how the S sublevel has or can hold a grand total of two electrons. Well, if you see this little section right here on the periodic table, this is two elements wide. Which, which is why we call this the S block. The P sublevel has a maximum of six electrons. And if you see over here, this little section right here, this is six elements wide. So this is the P block. The D sublevel uh, can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. And so this little section here, this is 10 elements wide representing the D block. And then last but not least, the F sublevel can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. And these two rows down here, these are 14 elements wide. So they are called the F block. All right, so let's go through the periodic table uh, in terms of electron configuration. So we'll start up here with hydrogen. And you can see the hydrogen is in row one, the S block, and it is the first element in the S block. So we say that hydrogen here is 1S1. Then we come over to helium, which I know technically it's over here in the P block, but remember the first energy level only has an S sublevel. So helium is in the first energy level, S block, second element, so helium is 1s2. Down to lithium. Lithium is in the second level in the S block, first element, so this is 2s1. Beryllium is 2s2. Then we come over to boron, and you can see that boron is in the second level, but now it is in the P block first element. So boron is 2P1. Carbon is 2P2. Nitrogen, 2P3. Oxygen is 2P4. Fluorine is 2P5. And neon is 2P6. On down to sodium. This is 3s1, 3s2, over to aluminum, which is 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6. Okay, when we go down to the fourth level, things are going to start to get a little more complicated. So potassium here is 4s1. Calcium is 4s2, but when we get to scandium, I have a 3 here to remind myself that the D block is still one energy level behind. So scandium is 3d1, titanium is 3d2, vanadium 3d3, and so on and so forth down the road till we get to zinc, which is 3d10. Then we cross over to gallium, we're back in the P block, and I have a four here to remind myself, okay, now we're back in the fourth energy level. So gallium is 4P1, 4P2, 4P3, so on and so forth, to krypton, which is 4P6. Okay, down to rubidium, 5S1, 5S2. We get to yttrium, which is 4D1. Zirconium is 4D2. 4d3, so on and so forth, all the way down to cadmium, which is 4d10. Indium is 5p1, 5p2, 5p3, all the way through the end. Xenon is 5p6. Down to cesium. It's going to get a little more complicated here. Cesium is 6s1. Barium is 6s2. But now we're going to come down here to lanthanum, which you can see there's a 4 here, so this is 4F1, and then 4F2, all the way down the road, down to ytterbium, which is 4F14. 
Now we go back up to lutetium, and this is 5d1, 5d2, all the way down to mercury, which is 5d10. Thallium is 6p1, 6p2, all the way through radon, which is 6p6. Down to francium, which is 7s1. Radium is 7s2. And now we go down to actinium, which is 5 F1, and then we go all the way down the F block here to Nobelium, which is 5F14. Back up to Lorentium, and this is 6D1, and then you can finish on out the pattern like so. All right, so that's how you read the periodic table in terms of electron configuration. I strongly suggest that you try to go through that on your own to make sure you understand the path and how all the sublevels and the energy levels and all that stuff works. All right, thank you guys so much. Check you later. And that's how it works. If you have any further questions, just comment below. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Dude.